Hey guys, it's David. Beautiful Saturday, October 29th. I'm uh, here on my front porch. I feel like I'm in an Alan Jackson song, just doing some front front porch sitting. And um, just wanted to come on here and give you an update. I, I, but before I do, I just wanna thank those of you who uh, are praying and believing with us for my body to be uh, physically healed of this. And um, I know that that is gonna happen. You say, how do I know? I know. I know. Um, and it's based on promises in the Word of God, and it's based on what I believe to a level of knowing, where I don't have to guess it. My my beliefs are not going to change uh, next week or a year from now or when I'm 80. Uh, I will still know what I know to be true, and that is this book. Y'all can't see it, but it's here. Um but I want I, I want to uh, I want to thank you not just for believing and standing with us in that, but also for those of you who have uh, donated through our Gifts and Go app that's on the top of my Facebook page. Um, in the corner of that, you'll see an amount that's been raised, and I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit quickly about what that money goes for. Right now, I'm unable to work; uh, they will not let me work, and and I'm understanding more and more why. Um, during this treatment and um i i uh i want you to know that every month we pull from those funds on that give send go app and it goes for our house payment monthly bills and food on the table so while i'm not physically able right now to uh sustain our household you guys are are, are stepping in and um so generously and so lovingly uh taking care of my family uh, while we go through this and I, I cannot thank you enough. Um, I, I told you at the beginning of this that I was going to take you on this journey of healing with me. And, um, because I, I, I want you to know at the end of this, and it won't be the end, but when I stand here with a report and say, it's gone, um, that no one goes, oh, see, he was wrong. Um, I, I'm here to tell you that you need to know what I know. And, um, uh, I'm going to share a little bit with you here in just a minute uh, about that. Uh, but I, I wanted to uh, to thank you guys for, for your uh, support and for your prayers. Um, this has been the, the hardest week yet because uh, after seeing a long laundry list of side effects from this medication, um, thank God I have not felt any except one. And this week has been tough because I have been extremely fatigued for no reason. Um, it can be at two o'clock in the afternoon and um, my body just starts shutting down and I'm like, I, I gotta lay down. And that is so hard for me because I'm I'm used to work, 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 go, 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 go all the time. And um, uh, I, I love being able to provide for my family and, and give them the things that they need. And so this has been extremely difficult for me to, to learn how to rest, but I'm learning. I am learning how to, how to re physically rest, um, as hard as it is. But I wanted to share with you something that you need to know, not for my benefit, but for your benefit, uh, about what the Bible talks about as the rest that we all need to be in. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. I want you to check this out. Let us then make every effort, some, some translations say to labor. Uh, let us then make every effort or labor to enter that rest so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. I'm going to share with you what that rest is that the Bible is talking about here in just a second. But think about this as we, as we uncover this. To not enter this rest is considered disobedience. So check this out. Back it up to verse 1 of that same chapter. Therefore, since the promise to enter his rest remains, let us beware that none of you be found to have fallen short. For we also have received the good news just as they did. But check this out. This is so revealing. But the message they heard did not benefit them. Why? Since they were not united with those who heard it in faith. What the Bible is saying here is that that faith is the rest that it's talking about. That's why later on in Hebrews, uh, the writer will tell us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Matter of fact, without faith, you're in, you're in disobedience because you're not believing. 
And um, uh, I, I need, I know so many people who, when you, you know, they're Christian, they've sat in the church pew longer than I have. When you start talking about faith, you start talking about knowing the will of God and believing for it uh, on a on a miraculous level, you lose them. You just lose them. And I, I'm here to tell you, if, if you're one of those people, I want you to think about something and how important faith is. Um, in James chapter 2, James says this. And I think it's in verse 19. He says, you believe that there's a God and you, you know you believe that well congratulations so do the demons and they tremble they shudder because they know that um and yet i see so many people who never get deeper than that level of belief and so when they hear this because of what they have bought into this red they can't enter into this rest because they refuse to enter it with faith. They refuse to hear the word of God with faith. And um, so I, I, I want to share something with you um, that is so important. Because here, just a couple of verses later, here in Hebrews chapter 4, it does a throwback to Genesis. And it says, on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. I want you to think about this. Why did God have to rest? I mean, he wasn't physically tired. I mean, he's God, right? Um, he doesn't fatigue like we do. So why did he rest? This is so important. Because after the sixth day, the work was done. It was finished. So, uh, so th think about this. Why the Bible doesn't say, do everything you can to enter into a closer relationship with God. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say make every effort or labor, work hard to get healed. It doesn't say that. It says there's one thing that we've got to work for. Every, every bit of our effort has to be toward one thing. And that is entering into that rest of knowing that the work is finished. This is so huge. This is so huge. And, and I need you to know this, not for my benefit, but for yours. Because trust me, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. So real quickly, I want you to go to John chapter 6. I want to share something with you. Um, this is so neat. John chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. Right? Let's see here. So it says... We all, we all have heard this, right? This is, uh, this is when Jesus feeds the 5,000. There was actually probably about twelve or 13,000. We know there were 5,000 men. Check this out. This is so revealing to this work and rest thing with God. It says, A huge crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was performing by healing the sick. Jesus went up to a mountain and sat down. Underline that right there. He sat down there with his disciples and it goes on and jesus is looking out at the multitude and the disciples are freaking out they're like god do you realize this is going to take like a year's wage to feed all these people just a little bit i mean it's going to take so much work and they're scrambling on how are we going to feed these people and jesus is sitting down right check this out what jesus says in verse 10 jesus said have the people sit down in other words, make everybody get into a position of rest and watch me work. See, he wouldn't compete with the disciples' work. And he won't compete with ours. When we go in and we labor to get healed, he won't compete with that. If we labor for a right relationship with him and we think that it's because of something we're going to do, you know, I'm going to pray nine hours a day. I'm going to, I'm going to be in the Word at least six hours a day, and uh, and and that's what's going to put me in right standing with God. The Bible says not to. That that is that's. It doesn't even say to to even entertain that kind of work. But what it does say is you need to enter into the rest, which is the faith, right? Because 
this is what I know in my life. When I go to work, God rests. But when I rest, like the Bible's talking about here, when I enter into that rest of knowing, then God starts working. Um, so when you think about this, and I'm saying right here in John chapter 6, because I want you to see something else. This is so neat. Um, John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29, if you're wondering what this work is, right? What, what can we do, people ask Jesus, what can we do to perform the works of God? Jesus replied, listen to this, this is so important. This is the work of God. And then he explains that you believe in the one he has sent. Wow. Wow. So, the entire Old Covenant, all the laws of the prophets, the 633 uh, laws that basically doomed every one of us, Jesus replaces them and says, no longer in the Old Covenant do you have to do, do, do in order to get God to do, 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 right? The New Covenant says it's built on His faithfulness, so God does the work, and our work is to believe in the one he sent, in Jesus. That's entering into that rest. Um, no wonder on the cross, when Jesus said, it is finished, the depth of that, of that proclamation, that it is finished. Uh, and what we have to do to do is believe that it's finished. Um, so I'm going to take you one other place. And this is John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. I want you to listen to this. Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me, this is the work that he was talking about, is believing, will also do the works that I do. And man, that was some pretty impressive works. I mean, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. I mean, he he did it all. But listen to what he says. And he, the, that person who believes, and he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. So why would him being at the Father's right hand give us power to do even greater works? Because he is there talking to the Father on our behalf. He's our mediator. And then he goes on to make a couple bold, bold statements. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And then he goes on and says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I know I just lost a lot of you with that. But I, I, again, these are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. So I can either enter that rest into knowing that what he said is true. Or I can refuse to and be in disobedience and expect absolutely nothing to happen. I can sit here and flip a coin and go, God, heads or tails, it's your will. I can't believe like that. Um, when you get into this book, you won't be able to believe like that. Um, so when you ask anything in my name, I will, a big revelation to what the will of God is, I will do it. So folks, I invite you to learn how to rest like I'm learning to rest um, in knowing. Because um, when you know, and uh, I, I just tell you this, for some reason, um, last week, the the story of Lazarus just stuck out at me uh, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And as Jesus approaches the tomb, he's not saying some long, long, you know, dramatic prayer. Um, he says simply this, I thank you, God, that you've heard my prayer. And I'm, I'm about to lose some of you too, but listen, when, when I pray, just in the last week, and so many of you have shared the same thing with me. 
when I start to pray and I thank God for his healing, I no longer get started and God speaks to my spirit. And he says this. He says, I've heard you. And I've got you. Thank you for believing and knowing what we know.